Howdy everyone, it's me once again, the one and only Killer Rodan. So today, of course, I'm going to be talking about some anime, because why the hell not, because this is what I do. I like talking about anime, of course, obviously. And just thought, uh, I'll just do this again, of course, because honestly, I feel like I don't talk about enough anime, even though I technically do, I've, I've said that before already, so I'm kind of repeating myself here. So yeah, but I'm, I'm pretty damn pissed, because a lot of these American companies would, of course, attempt to censor a lot of the anime because of politics, nudity, or various other contrived reasons. So I'm viewing the TV show, or at least a certain segment of the TV show of Sailor Moon, Supers, of course. So, okay, this is the edited version of Sailor Moon Super, Supers. That was released on VHS tape. That's the one I'm talking about, folks. Just just so you know. I just thought, again, I can't stress these enough. I'm going to go to a bit more specific here because this series was divided into two story arcs. This specific series, anyway. And the first arc pretty much was for 22 episodes, of course. And, yeah, that's definitely the thing here, folks. Yeah, this series has something to do with, with of course, Rini or Sailor Mini Moon in the American version and Pegasus, where they will have this kind of some kind of friendship. Of course, they'll get to know each other better, and obviously there's gonna be a bit of a struggle going on with that. Of course, because we do need some drama, right? And simultaneously, there's quite a few other things. Obviously, like this blue hair character right here, she's part of a trio of characters. Of these girls, who is, of course, going to cause havoc, obviously. And there's like the main villain, is this queen character, supposed to be a big, big old baddie and whatnot. And also, also, you see this, these characters, these high school characters, they're trying to have their own thing in high school. And of course, high school itself, that experience can be a pain in the ass, obviously. And then outside of school, they're trying to go to the movies and just have their own thing going on, obviously. These characters may want to go maybe to the beach for a little while, um, act all googly eye to the boys, or what have you. And then, or just have like a little snack somewhere, and just trying to do like everyday things, which of course isn't easy to do because, concerning the fact that, yes, I have to save the world, obviously. Which, yes, does have something to do with the fact that, yeah, in the future, because it was sent to the past or whatever, and. Which is in regards of the fact that they will live on... It has something to do with planets, of course. When you think about it, obviously. And if this sounds really... Com not forgetting about the fact that what happened previously in the series. If this sounds like a big convoluted mess. Well, that's because it is. Out. My, 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 my head. What? What the hell? Mr. Monkey, what are you doing? Just go, go find a job. No, seriously. Go find a job. Go and, go and get. No, seriously. And you're just spazzing out. Oh, okay. Again, I'm reviewing the VHS tape edited version. I can't stress that enough. Okay? That's the version I'm, I'm talking about here, right? So, of course, there's going to be things that might seem like not suitable. Because it's going to be deemed as something for kids. Which is asinine. When you think about it. Why does every anime thing have to be for kids? I don't know. So, yeah, that's basically what I'll be talking about. Of course, maybe some scenes might be shortened. Or edit it completely out, which yes, of course, will leave continuity errors all over the damn place, obviously. And for those who don't know, yes, they eventually released the uncensored versions on Blu-ray and DVD, of course. And you could find those in multiple editions, so like quite a few different editions of the same thing, depending on where you look. And yes, of course, there are unedited versions on VHS tape, just it depends where you look at. But again, I'm just reviewing specifically this saga with Pegasus and specifically this version of of this saga here. Okay, just throwing it out there, all right? You know how Star Wars is divided by sagas and how it's divided into specific moments in the franchise. That's kind of like how this is, just to be perfectly crystal clear. So you're going to know what I'm referring to. Just just so you know. Uh, so of course, you're not going to receive a lot of the context of certain things because of the fact it was severely edited. Of course. And that pisses me off. That would have just angers me. If 
If it's intended to be a sauna way, leave it alone. Why well, gotta alter it? I don't, I don't get it. Anyway, let's just talk about this, okay, folks? Let's just get it all the, out the way. And, okay. I mean, while I technically did review the this season, of course, but I'm just, like I said, it's one of the focus upon a specific part of the season because of the saga. Because, like I said, it was divided into two parts, this saga anyway. So anyway, like I was saying is that, of course, it's going to focus on this group of enemies who, let's just say, this trio, to be more exact. Yeah, they will focus on this group of characters, of course. Because they're up to no good, obviously. These group of characters, this trio, I mean, pretty much consist of Fisheye, Tagozai, and Hawkseye. They pretty much were created from animals, I shouldn't guess for yourself, from this circus by this, let's just say this individual, to destroy the Sailor Guardians. Sailor Guardians being Sailor Moon and the rest of the gang, obviously. They each respectively target, uh, I guess you say, a Sailor Scout to kill. The only exception is, of course, Sailor Venus, who is talking about some other individual, Zos, of course. So, yeah, let's just say that they're going to pretty much want to go after them because pretty much throughout this saga, of course, they want to basically go after the Aho idea. Of course, it's gonna be ma ma mostly focused on this role. Obviously, the whole thing with Rini or Mini Moon or Chibi Moon, whatever you call her, and Pegasus it's just, will become important. It just depends on which uh, part of the saga that you're referring to, obviously. So, anyway, again, like this queen type character, of course, would be pretty much given orders to this trio. Like I was saying, I mentioned two trios in this video, like I was referring to the other one. Yes, they will eventually come to the part of the story later on because there's like another different villain that comes into play. So I'm just trying to be precise as humanly possible, of course. I want to focus on the three men, folks. Yes, you heard me right. The, these characters are all three men. Yes, sir. -y. I know that may seem confusing because, yes, I'm including this character. Yep. All three are supposed to be men. But it's just that one with the blue hair looks extremely, extremely feminine, just so you know. And so, yeah, but in the American version, that was changed into uh, just a woman, which just seems weird if you ask me. I don't understand to watch the harm here. Okay, you want to show... A really feminine looking guy in, in a show, even despite the fact that said individual is a villain. That's, that's not a remark towards, of course, anyone, any guy out that looks feminine. That's not trying to say that these people are bad guys or anything. It's just because of the fact that it just happened that this individual is the villain. That's it. So, of course, in the American version, the lines of dialogue then were before it said individual as a he, him, as a guy or whatever, was of course tweaked up to make it as if it was a straight couple kind of a thing. And no, this is not a stab towards gay people as well. It can be a good or bad person regardless. But my point being is that why can't you show this kind of individuals in the show? I don't get this is a superhero show, right? So of course there's gonna be a lot of people watching it. Superhero stuff or or should I say superhero and stuff is very popular among people anyway. So you would think that this would be a good way to have some representation. And yes, this show did get some positive feedback, well, at least the Japanese version. The Japanese version did get some positive feedback because it was being progressive at the time, which I would agree. But like I said, I'm just talking about the English faster version that was released on the VHS tape, which a lot of people are familiar with. And so I'm sticking by that. But this... The uh, English version was also heavily criticized for having the villains be like outlandish, over the top, or just outright ridiculous, I guess. And also, to uh, distinguish the fact that the villains trio, the three guys, they have, they, at least in this version uh, of the show, they, their personalities are pretty bland. You can't really distinguish them from each other, and they're pretty entertainable. And in some ways, I can kind of see what you mean. Sure, okay. And then also concerning the fact, Mr. Monkey, what the hell? What are you doing? I told you to go get a job. 
and you still haven't looked for work. What is the matter with you? Oh, boy, you're a pain in the ass, you know that? You're a pain in the ass. Anyway, as I was saying, folks, yes, the LGBT plus content was heavily altered again. So, of course, this, again, this doesn't mean the show was trying to say that gay people, like we were saying a moment ago, are bad people. It wasn't saying that. You could be a bad person regardless of your sexual orientation or however you dress. It just depends on how you act, of course. Your sexual orientation, the way you dress, has nothing to do with it. I mean, at least you're a Nazi, I guess, or a skinhead. But that's besides the point, because any, anybody can be a bad person. Anybody from any country, uh, regardless of sexual orientation, can be bad, yes. But I just find it weird that this was heavily altered again due to the fact of the LGBT plus stuff, of course. It was just ridiculous when you think about it. Uh, monkey! Damn it, Mr. Monkey! What are you doing? What is your problem? You, you're just dancing. Oh, I don't know what... There's not even no music playing in the background. You damn weirdo. Anyway, like I said, yes, another issue is that the way it's written. I mean, the dialogue itself is pretty bad when you think about it. I mean, when you think about the dialogue, good dialogue is supposed to convey a message probably to the viewer so that the viewer can know what's going on. But since the dialogue itself is pretty shoddy when you think about it, it you don't know what's supposed to be, like, some of the things may not make any sense when you think about it. And, but anyway, moreover is that there's still going to be some plot holes because of continuities, because the scenes themselves were rearranged, or maybe they were just heavily edited because of that. Like, like I was saying earlier, scenes were shortened or just completely removed, even if it's just for a few seconds shortened, I was just completely moved entirely. And then the dialogue itself was freaked up so in a way so that nobody else would get the hint at how the original was intended to be, of course. And it's just that they keep centering, and more centering, and then, of course, more centering in one way or another, which, of course, is ridiculous when you think about it. I, didn't like, I did not appreciate that whatsoever. And also, damn it, Mr. Monkey. Oh, you want the VJ's tape? Okay. I'll give you the VHS tape copy of this. Hey, Air Force, can you just... Yeah, we're there. Brother, yeah, it's in the corner right there. Yeah, there you go. You get it. Yeah, so can you just give it to him? Yeah, give it to him. Okay, that's what... Anyway. Ugh. So, like I was saying, and of course, you can't swear. You can't do any swear words at all because little Jimmy over here... Man, I like it. Little Jimmy over here might get too... Uh, might get scared because a character said a no-no word. So, yes, you can't sound like a bastard in, in the show because it might have offended somebody, which, of course, is, is pretty ridiculous. Because when you think about it, it's just it's, it's dumb. It's so dumb. So, okay, this one, this version, of course, I'm talking about, is, is not very, it's just, like, it makes me want to think, what the hell? It's just, I don't know. And, of course, he's going to have the, th the opening theme song of the show. It's going to be the same exact theme song like it was way before, like, the theme song never changed, at least for the American version, like, for the bastard versions, the bastardization, as you call it, I guess, the theme song never changed, the theme song never changed, which is, I kind of think it's kind of weird when you think about it, because new Sailor Scouts were later added as the series progressed, so they don't get, they don't even get mentioned in the theme song, so what the hell, I, I don't get it, and by the way, this version of the show also premiered on the Cartoon Network's programming named Tanami in the United States. So this showed on Cartoon Network uh, in Tanami, by the way. That's where a lot of people witness this version, unless you watch them the VHS tape, of course. I mean, there were people that did collect the VHS tape versions of this film, of these movies or anime show, of course, but yes, obviously, I'm just reviewing this one, folks, this version of the show, so... I don't know. It's just, I don't know what they were thinking, aside from being homophobic in some ways. But anyway, so I don't want to talk about the specific releases other than the VHS tape copy. And yes, the thing is that the voice acting isn't particularly great. The voice acting isn't very good either. I mean, it's not the worst, I guess, but it's barely passable at that, I suppose. But anyway, a lot, lot, lot of the Japanese culture was, of course, maybe some other movies or 
TV shows might got a worse treatment in that, but just the Japanese culture was severely censured as, in some ways in this one as well, which I thought was weird. Because, like, like I said, maybe because of politics or maybe because of the... I mean, it's a culture thing in some ways, I guess. But just give me a, give me a break, will you? I mean, really, that's just ridiculous. So, okay, the music itself isn't too bad, I suppose. The music is passable, obviously. I'll give it, I'll give it that, of course. And just in the grand scheme of things, I just didn't like how what was done, of course. And this obviously was loosely based on the manga series, at least to some extent that was published beforehand. And also, okay, okay, I actually thought it was funny when Rini was taller, um, her mother was a lot shorter. I mean, okay, yeah, that that, that was funny. I actually I actually chuckled at this. It made me laugh. I, I, I'll give her that. So there you go. I suppose it, it was funny. I, I like that. So anyway. I mean, the animation itself is actually really good. I really do like the animation in this. But that's only because of the Japanese version, obviously. So, I mean, yes, the queen evil character, she's cool in her own way. But, again, I'm referring to the Japanese version, obviously. I mean, yes, you could be a bad person regardless of gender. It doesn't matter what gender you are. You can still be a bad person, a good person, regardless. Anyway, I'll give this version, of course, of this specific saga... An overall rating of of a four point eight out of ten. It's a four point eight out of ten for me. So of course, as always, thanks for watching and take care. Until next time, see ya. Oh yeah, I'm going to Wendy's again. How many times have I been here already? Christ Almighty! Ugh. I got nothing against this company, of course, or anything, but still, I, I like Wendy's. But don't you think I'm going here too much already? So many calories. Ugh.